Good morning, everyone. So I've been really rubbish with filming. I haven't really been up to much, to be honest. I haven't really had a chance to film, but I'm actually on another work trip today. So I've got to drive to Birmingham, which isn't as far as I was expecting. I don't think it's gonna be as bad as Kent. It's only four hours away. In fact, slightly less even, um, which is crazy. I didn't think Birmingham was that close to Cornwall. I don't know why, but I thought it was further away. So. The time is currently just past nine. Um, I've been told to get to the office about three, half three. I'm gonna check into the hotel first and meet Kelly who I work with about half two. So I'm gonna leave here at like half nine, probably 10. Need to get fuel and remember my receipt so I can claim it back as an expense. But yeah, I've just packed all my stuff not taking a suitcase this time because I am only there for the night. Annoyingly, there's a free bar tomorrow and I have to drive home. I got told I was allowed to stay an extra night because I live so far away. Um, but because of budgeting and things and because I think so many people are going to this work event, um, I can only stay one night, which is the night before the event. So the event's tomorrow. So the plan for today is go into the office about three, half three, meet my manager. I think we're going out for dinner with my manager and my team. And then back to the hotel to chill. And then tomorrow it's a sales event. It's called Top Dog Day. Um, so it's just sales and customer success, but it should be good. Um, I'm a bit nervous because it's sales and there was a guy that was like hitting on me last time on my first day in Birmingham, so he's gonna be there. Um, and he tried to message me and stuff, but hopefully it's fine. But it'll be nice to go to an office again. The Birmingham office is so lush. That's where I had my first day and it's just so modern and nice. And it's nice for me to socialize because obviously I work from home. I don't get to do it a lot, so it's quite nice. And I obviously get paid for it. And I actually make more money on work trips because they always pay you back more than you spend, if that makes sense, like with fuel and things. A bit worried about my ankle. Um, you probably would have seen on Instagram, I ran my first 10 mile run on Sunday and it has absolutely killed my right foot. And it's making me really nervous for mask ball. Mask ball was this Saturday and I just don't wanna be in pain because I won't enjoy myself. Um, I mean, if I'm still in pain, I will be getting so, so drunk that I can't feel a thing. But yeah, I'm kind of nervous for this journey, but hopefully it's okay. We'll keep you updated though. I'm just gonna go make some breakfast and probably shoot off to be honest. So I don't know if I've shown you my channel. I have a feeling I have. If I have, sorry, you're gonna have to video it again. But I thought I'd show you guys what I have for breakfast. So I've tried all muesli and Alpen is just the best. Like it just tastes so yummy like it doesn't taste gross like some usually you eat and you're like i know i'm eating this because it's healthy but i'm not enjoying it and this i actually really enjoy then i have oh the lid nearly came off alpro vanilla yogurt now if you have been watching my videos for a while you will know that i am obsessed with the oatly oat gut in strawberry they don't sell it in cornwall they sell it in like sainsbury's and Tesco's and things, but in Cornwall, they do not sell it. Like me and my dad have been to every supermarket in Cornwall, more or less, honestly at this point, and we can't find it. It's just nowhere. So actually, when I go up country today, I might try and find some and bring it home and just hoard up on the stuff because it is so, so good. Like this is good, but the oat gut in strawberry is insane. I've tried the Alpro strawberry, and it's got bits in it. And I know like I need to grow up, but I'm just not really big into bits on in yogurt. And then I have fruit, a plethora of berries. So blueberries, raspberries, and strawberries. And that's pretty much it. So I weigh out 45 grams of Alpen. And that seems to be about, I think it's like, I can tell you now. 166 calories and so this breakfast is probably just over 200 calories i don't overly track my calories but obviously it's nice to be aware of what i'm eating because i am trying to lose weight for australia trying and failing no i've lost about 10 pounds i would say um but i haven't really moved for about a month because 
I've just been maintaining really I've not been trying too hard so I want to get back on it now um but yeah that's my breakfast I also forgot to say I do 40 grams of Alpro yogurt um it says the serving's 100 grams and you can do what you'd like but I just feel like there's juice in the berries and it all kind of mixes together and I'm not really big on wet cereal like if I have cereal I don't have milk which people always find really weird but I just think it makes it go soggy and I'm just not into it which is strange because I'm a milkshake fiend I love a milkshake but like normal milk I just like I've never been one of those people to just have a cup of milk apart from when I was like a baby um but yeah also how good does it feel when you weigh out the perfect amount like I haven't even just done that but like you know when you perfectly weigh out the amount you want to weigh out without having to like spoon some back Ugh, dream and then this is the final product. It's literally so yummy. I could eat it every day. To be fair, I do eat it every day, more or less. Although, the other day I made garlic mushrooms for breakfast and my dad thought it was so weird. He was like, I like garlic mushrooms, but not for breakfast. And I was like, I swear that's quite a common thing to have for breakfast, but now I'm like, oh my God, maybe it's not. But I mean, I work from home and I'm not kissing anyone. So <laughs> bring all the garlic mushrooms to me because they were amazing. If you like garlic, you would just love them. And assuming you like mushrooms, I know a lot of people don't. If you don't like mushrooms, grow up. Also, how funny is this? I told my dad in a passing comment, I literally mentioned it once, how much I liked um, those fruit slice bar thingies. I don't know what they're called. Um, they used to get in your packed lunches. This man came home with not one, not two, not three, not even four, five packets of these bars because I told him I liked them once. How funny is that? You best believe I will be taking these with me to Birmingham for the road trip. Okay, we're all packed, ready to go. I've got my snacks next to me, which you can't see. Um, bags in the back. And yeah, we're ready to go. I don't know when I will check in with you guys next. I'm assuming when I get to the hotel. I don't think I'm gonna stop off because it's not too long of a journey. Like I normally drive to Bournemouth without stopping and that's three hours, sometimes three and a half if I come from my mum's. Um, my skin is not loving life right now. Okay, so I've made it to Birmingham. The driver's actually okay. It was just motorways the whole way. Like I was on the M5 for for ages um it was just kind of the last 15 minutes in birmingham town center that was slightly stressful there were two lanes there were three lanes that merged into two and i always hit a car which wasn't great but apart from that i did okay i didn't really mess up or anything so i feel better for driving back tomorrow that you almost don't really have to concentrate as much on motorways that sounds so dangerous but like i'm sure if you can drive you know what i mean which means tomorrow when i can leave the office at four i can just do my 15 minutes of scary driving and then once that's out of the way the drive is so calm and it went quite quickly as well i'm a bit nervous about parking don't know if i'm in the exact right car park i should be in but the postcode is the same and it says outside the ibis hotel so i'm in the i'm in the ibis hotel car park it's not the hotel i'm staying at i don't know why i don't know why we didn't book this one to be honest um because now i have to walk approximately six minutes to my other hotel and i don't know how to get out of this car park it's really scary it was like an automatic gate um but yeah so i've made it in one piece i'm going to check what seat i'm in in the office and what desk i've booked because i have to arrive by myself now so i'm kind of nervous like kelly's train's running late so i'm gonna have to meet her in the office and on my first day I walked into the office glass doors and everyone stared at me and it was horrifically embarrassing. But I mean, that shouldn't happen today because I actually have a key card now so I can scan my way into the office. And obviously on my first day, I wasn't aware that that worked um, or how it worked rather. So I just was pushing on these glass doors and everyone was looking at me like, it's an automatic door, what are you doing? I think I might hotspot my work laptop now really quickly because I had the day off yesterday um just check some emails and stuff for the next 20 minutes and then walk over at half two i will show you my hotel room when i check in i don't think it's going to be as nice as the other one but we'll see okay we've made it 
Um, the weather is disgusting, guys. It's so grim. Um, I'll show you my room though. Let me just flip you around. Let's go back to the door, give you the full experience again. So, come through the door, obviously. Little mirror here. The lighting in this hotel room is genuinely a joke. Hair dryer, which we love. Some teas and coffees, towels, drawers, little hanger, bathroom. The shower's really nice. Love that. Um, yeah, this is the bathroom. And then I've got like two single beds by the looks of it. I should have brought a friend. Um, TV, little desk, cute little phone. Um, a table, which I've just banged my bag on before I get into the office. And then this is the view, an actual bomb site over here. Um, but yeah, this is it really. So the scariest thing just happened. I literally was out of my car for two minutes and it, I was kind of walking in like this really quiet area to like get here. Like it was only a six minute walk from my car in the other hotel car park, but that six minute walk, like no one was around and it was like very like windy and like really dodgy. And literally within two minutes, a car stopped me with like four guys in it and they were like shouting stuff at me and the panic set in. Like I actually hate being a girl sometimes. Like normally, like I wouldn't get too spooked by stuff like that because there's normally people around, you know what I mean? Like, but I was literally looking around like, if they really wanted to throw me in this car, like they could right now, like no one is around to stop them. It'd be me versus four guys. And it's really like spooked me. So I'm sorry, like a little bit jittery, but I've made it to the hotel, so I'm all good. Um, this hotel's really cool by the way. Like, I don't know what room I prefer. Um, but I will try and get a clip of downstairs. It's a 24 hour bar. There's like a shuffleboard table. It's so funky downstairs, like LED lights everywhere, like neon lights everywhere. Um, yeah, just like a really cool, like defo, like a more modern, like younger person hotel. The last hotel I was in was like a resort. So it had like obviously the spa and stuff. And it was like kind of off the beating track, but this is like a skyscrapery um hotel in the middle of Birmingham but it's very trendy um in the reception area so I'll try and get a video I'm currently just waiting for Kelly I really don't want to go into the office by myself I just can't be asked so I think I'm just gonna wait for Kelly um and hope that I don't get in trouble for it um because my manager is parking in the same car park I parked in <laughs> and she knows what my car is so I'm scared and there's not that many cars in the car park so I feel like she's gonna see my car and be like oh Izzy's here um, but hopefully not. Hopefully she's okay with me waiting for Kelly. Don't really know, we'll see. The lighting in this hotel is, is so horrific. I know I keep saying it, but it's truly not good. Um, so I've just got back from the office. Update, so basically, after that weird little situation happened with the car and the four guys, I got to my hotel and I was like a little bit shaken up. Um, and I didn't really fancy walking to the office by myself. So I waited for Kelly, um, but I knew I was going to be late. So just a little bit late, nothing too crazy. But I had my manager's number, so I just texted her and I was like, hey, like, I'm really sorry I'm late. I'm just gonna wait for Kelly and then walk over with her. Um, like just apologize for being late and just said like, something kind of shook me up, but I'm okay. Which like, it sounds really dramatic, but the text wasn't that dramatic. I can't remember exactly what I said. <laughs> and she rang me straight away and she was like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, 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 I'm fine, I'm good. Um, I'll just explain the situation to her. And she was like, I can come and meet you now. And um, I was just like, oh no, honestly, it's okay. Like, Kelly's here now. Like, we're literally gonna walk now and be five, 10 minutes. And she was like, she was like, I'll meet you at the entrance um, of the mailbox, which is this like massive complex in Birmingham, which is where the Birmingham office is. It's got like Harvey Nicks there, BBC Studios is there. Um, so she said she'd meet us there. <laughs> and I was like, no, 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 it's fine. Um, me and Kelly started walking, Kelva called me, she was like, oh, it's really cold, like, how far away are you? And I was like, oh my god, Kelva, you don't have to wait for us, like, <laughs> I was like, I told you, honestly, it's fine, I'm with Kelly, like, I'm all good, and she was like, you sure you're okay? I was like, yeah, she was so sweet, and then we got there, and she was like, right, first things first, let's get a brew, so we went to the coffee machine, went and got ourselves some coffees, had a little catch-up, literally did zero work, and then, um, she said she's gonna take us out for... A cocktail and some food I think we're gonna go tapas which I'm really excited about so we've just come back to the hotel for a quick turnaround I'm not gonna change or anything um, but yeah 
quite exciting. It'll be really nice to socialise and we're on a ban of work talk, which is nice. We've been told to talk strictly about everything else apart from work, which would be really nice. This boy I know that I work with called Callum is staying tomorrow night. And I'm like, how have you wrangled that? Um, but then I just spoke to my manager and she said, um, I'm gonna put you down because it's quite heavy. She said that, I'm gonna have to stay like this to fit in the frame. Um, she was like, oh yeah, you could have stayed tomorrow night instead of tonight, but then it, I knew you wouldn't have been able to get into the office for nine because I would have had to leave Cornwall like latest 5 a.m., which is just crazy. Um, so I was like, no, no, you're right. And she was like, we can go for a drink tonight. And I was like, cool, sounds good. She was like, I'll buy us the first round. And I was like, that's really sweet. Um, and obviously our dinner's covered with expenses, so we're gonna go out for a couple of drinks just my manager and kelly and me myself and i um which will be really nice so that is the plan it is currently oh 5 26 so i have about half an hour before i meet them um but yeah the weather is so so bad still i'll show you i mean luckily it was dry just walking back from the office but yeah Birmingham's a lot pretty at night. I won't deny it. Also, I have to tell the story. I'm really praying he won't watch this video. I'm pretty sure he won't. Um, basically, my first ever holiday romance. I think I was 15 and I was in Turkey and I was in a bar with my mum. I went to the toilet, came back and there was this guy sat with my mum and came back and my mum was like, oh, this is Ronan, like introduce me to him. And I was like, oh my God, hi. And he was 16, he was like one year older than me and he was half Turkish, half English. He was from Birmingham. But he worked out there for like the whole of the summer with his dad or something, or his uncle. I think it was his uncle's bar, if I remember rightly. And I just fell in love with him because I was obviously 15 and I was like, oh my God. And I thought it was really sweet how he like approached my mum first and like asked my mum if it was okay if he like got to know me and was like asking my mum questions about me and stuff and my mum was like, oh my God, how exciting. Cause I was, it was like my first kind of like thing or like the first time anyone had ever showed me attention. And then after that, I made my family go to that bar like every single night, which they loved anyway. It was like the best bar anyway, to be honest. But I obviously went there for him. And on like the last night, I like said goodbye and like left. We were walking down the street. I swear to God, I heard, this he's running after me and he's like shouting my name he's like is he is he wait and then he like i like turn around and i'm like what the fuck it was literally like something out of a film and he looked at my mum and he was like can i please say like goodbye properly and my mum was like smiling and she was like yeah of course and um she like walked ahead and then like he like kissed me goodbye like it was literally like out of a film it was crazy and he was just like just saying like really sweet things and like we've literally kept in touch ever since and like i'm 23 now and he lives in Birmingham and he's just messaged me and was like oh my god you're in Birmingham like what the hell and he was like I know you've always wanted to be like a corporate girl and I was like oh my god what is happening and I was like are you still here and he was like I'm like 20 minutes outside the city so that's the update really but like how crazy is that imagine if I like went for a drink with him or something I mean I didn't really have time but how crazy is that it's like is this like my book moment like if my life was a book like it's giving me colleen hoover right now i'm not even gonna lie okay so situation is i'm so drunk right now it's 4 a.m and i have to be into the office at nine which means i have to be up at seven which means i need three hours of sleep which i'm just not gonna get like let's just be real i'm not gonna get three hours of sleep i'm so hungover I want to cry. <laughs> I had such a good night though. I don't know if I vlogged last night. I literally can't remember because I was so drunk. Um, the cutest man walked me part walked me home. He was like gay and he was like, I was like, you can just leave me here. And he was like, no, I'm not going to go until you walk through that door. And I was like, you're so cute. Walked through the door and there were like two guys playing shuffleboard. And they were like, do you have to play shuffleboard? And I was like, no. And they were like, come play with us. So I was like, okay. <laughs> this is like four in the morning. And, um... They were like, oh, that's our manager over there. She's like a boss bitch. And I was like, this girl sat over there. They were like, she's a multi-millionaire. And I was like, fucking good on you. I was like, good on you. They were like in construction or something. I don't know. They were like two like really muscly guys. And they're like this girl. And I was like, 
love that for you. And they were all so nice. And then I met two other girls who were Irish and I sat with them for a while and they were like, oh, we're going home in a minute. We've got to go back to Ireland. Like our taxi's getting us at, I think, half 4 a.m. Half 4 a.m., that sounds weird. And I was like, oh, cool, we'll sit with you until then. Sat with them until then. They had fried chicken and chips. And then they were like, we're not gonna eat this. Like, do you want it? And I was like, sure. So I fucking ate their leftover chicken and chips. Um, Anyway, I'm really, really hungover and I've been told I need to cover it today um, from all the big managers and stuff in work. So I'll update you with how that goes. But currently, I don't know how I'm gonna hide it because I'm still fucked. I'm still, I feel like hungover, but I'm also still drunk as fuck. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Um, fuck. Can you see it? Right. Oh, that is horrific lighting. Um, as you can tell by the sound of the rain, the weather is a joke. It's actually the wind I'm mostly frightened of. Um, but sales event complete. Literally had so much fun. Like, the fact that I get paid for, like, fun events is really, really fun and fresh. I love that. Um, the long drive begins. My manager tried to get me to go for a drink after work and I was like, I've got to be sensible and start the drive home because I'm gonna have to stop off for dinner, coffees, wheeze, probably not gonna get home until like silly o'clock. Um, and I've got meetings tomorrow. So I need to be on top form. But there was talks of me staying another night, but I'm glad I didn't. I think it would have been a bad idea. But yeah, overall, very successful day. I will check in with you when I'm home. Good morning, everyone. I'm just gonna pop you there. Um, that's better. That's actually quite a nice angle. And I'm covering myself because I hate when you can see me in the mirror. Um, basically, yesterday was rough, guys. Like, I finished work at five in the end. Oh, I obviously left off being in the car, just about to begin the journey. Um, and oh my god that was the roughest um first couple of hours of a journey ever so basically the weather was torrential rain i've never driven a weather like that like not to that degree it was crazy firstly driving up birmingham was just quite scary like i thought i was on like a fucking tram line at one point um i think i'm okay uh but yeah that took me like an hour to get out of Birmingham. Bearing in mind it took me 15 minutes to get into Birmingham when I arrived. Um, but I obviously left at like rush hour and it was crazy. But I just wanted to get on the road. Um, but it wasn't really the traffic that bothered me, it was the weather. It was, as soon as on the M5, I literally skidded like three times in like standstill water. Um, and it was just crazy, it was really dangerous. Cars were obviously going too fast. Um, so yeah, it was quite rough. I was also starving because at this point, by the time I got out of Birmingham, it was like knocking on seven, I'd say. The first services were shut that I went to, or I couldn't actually get to it because there were roadworks blocking the um, exit to it. And then the second services I stopped off at was Gloucester, I think, and it was just like a farm shop. And I was like, your girl needs some fast food. Like, sorry, farm food ain't gonna cut it right now. So the third services I stopped at, I was quite lucky and I got Burger King, which was lush, although I really fancied a milkshake and they didn't have any milkshakes. So I got a, is it called a chicken legend? Um, meal with a Coke, full fat, obs. Um, and the like chili cheese bites they do. I'm obsessed with those by the way. Remember when Mackie's copied them recently? Like, I don't know how that wasn't a lawsuit. Rang my mum, had a little rant to my mum. Um, and then had to get fuel, which was like 190 something, which was just sick, but I didn't really wanna stop off and fill up in Birmingham before I left because it was just manic rush hour and I just didn't wanna do it. I was like, I'll deal with that at a later date. Um, but I work cover anyway, so I should be okay. But yeah, it took me, I got home just before 11, so to my dad really, really quickly, and then headed straight to sleep and had a small iron. Um, I woke up at eight, normally wake up at six, around six, 
to do some bits and bobs before work. Um, but um, but I let myself have a line because I was so tired and I obviously got like two and a half hours of sleep the night before, if that. Um, but I had so much fun going away, like going out with my manager for drinks was so much fun, even though I completely embarrassed myself. She showed a picture yesterday, caught my manager showing a picture to everyone and I was like, what's that? It's a bloody picture of me, Kelvin, my manager, um, the vice principal of education, of the education sector in the company, um, another guy in sales really high up. And I was like, I do not remember that. I have zero recollection of that. I thought I was like fine. Like I thought I was drunk, but I remembered everything. Clearly not. Also, this is horrific. Made a TikTok about this this morning because I just needed to speak about it because I was just in disbelief. I woke up to a message from this guy that I have literally spoken to once virtually, um, but he had, he was really, really nice. I had like a good old half an hour chat with him. Really, really lovely, like when I first started the company. He's in the legal sector, I'm in healthcare. Um, and saw him at the office yesterday and he, like, he was really chatty when I spoke to him that one time, so I was quite surprised that he didn't really come over to me yesterday. Um, there was kind of like an awkward vibe, but I didn't think anything too much of it because it was just a manic day. This sales event we had was just crazy. Yeah, woke up this morning from a message from him being like, hey, like, hope you had a nice day. Sorry I didn't come over and say hi. Um, hopefully catch you next time you're in um, Birmingham. And I thought, oh, that's really nice, but weird. Like, I've literally spoken to him once. Um, scroll up, I'd messaged him, hi, kiss, at like almost three in the morning, the night I went out with my manager. So I was like, oh my God, no wonder he was looking at me yesterday, like, you're a freak. Like, what on earth did I do? So I messaged him back being like, I'm so sorry, like, I was so drunk, like me and my manager went out and we were talking about networking, so that probably was me trying to network and it just coming off completely wrong. Don't even fancy this guy. Like it genuinely it is just like, I think he's, he was really nice from what I spoke, from the time I spoke to him. So, but I don't know how he's taken it. I'm scared he thinks I was like sliding into the DMs. Well, I did slide into the DMs. At like three in the morning, like who does that? He's probably thinking you're literally a freak. Um, but no, he was calm to be fair. He replied being like, um, oh, I heard Tuesday got messy, lol. Um, networking's always a good thing. Yeah, definitely. Oh, and I also asked, I was like, there's basically an unofficial Christmas party because um, our company, this thing called Summer Fridays, where you get, you finish every Friday at 12 o'clock. Um, so to do that for eight weeks, we've stopped doing Christmas parties at our company. Um, so there's like an unofficial one where I guess people have to just pay for their own hotel and stuff if they came. But I said to him, I was like, uh, I think he's from Birmingham actually. So I think he does actually work there. I'm pretty sure he does. Um, so I was like, oh, if you're going to that, I'll see you then. And he was like, yeah, sure. Sounds good. Uh, so hopefully I've done damage control and it's okay, but he definitely still thinks I'm a freak. Anyway, that was my trip. Um, woke up this morning, had a bit of a mad rush, had a client meeting, was supposed to have a client meeting at half 10 and they didn't show up. So I was kind of running around like a headless chicken this morning for no reason, but I can't complain really. Also got some free socks from the event, which I'm yet to open. Let's do a little uh, sales event unboxing. This is literally all I got. Oh, there was free food as well. I didn't have any because um, I, oh, I, um, it was just manic. Like it was ZZ's and they bought so much food over. Like it was crazy. It looked so nice, but obviously free food in an office full of 750 people, however many it was yesterday. It was just crazy. So I was like, I'm just not gonna attempt to even like worm my way in because it was just insane. Anyway, these are my uh, socks. Very nice. Repping um, Gong, which is, you can't really see. Um, it's basically just an application we use that records customer calls. It's really cool actually. Um, not that you guys actually care about this, but yeah, so it automatically records your calls and then like transcribes what you say and picks up on like action points. So if you say like, I'll, fo I'll follow this up with an email after we speak, blah, blah, blah. Like it will like remind you because it's like picked out from the conversation. Um, and you can just like filter the conversation and stuff. It's really cool. Um, but yeah, so there was an Irish man and an American guy that came in to talk to us. 
about Gong, which me and my team already use, but most of the wider customer success team are yet to try it. So it was interesting. I was laughing though. I was thinking this sounds like the start of a joke, like an Irish man and an American man walk into a boardroom. Like, anyway, it was funny. How is the American accent real? Like I was literally listening to him like, I just can't, it's such a strange accent. Like he was just so American. It was making me giggle. Irish accents are so beautiful. This man, oh, he had like black hair, a black beard, was dressed really nicely. He had this really thick Irish accent and I was just like, oh, in love. It's so important to have office crushes, guys. Like you need one in every department because it just makes the day go quicker and it's fun. I love that. Honestly, the amount of crushes I developed yesterday is probably unhealthy at this point. Um, but yeah, I did see that guy from sales. It was so awkward. I kept bumping into him, which is just so typical. Like we just kept crossing paths and he was just like pretending he didn't see me. I was pretending I didn't see him. It was just so awkward. Like if I went this way, he would like go the other way. And like, it was just awkward. Like it was not the vibe, but the actual sales event was really, really cool. It felt like I was in a movie, like, it felt like I was in Wolf of Wall Street, you know, when they all cheer each other. It was like crazy, like, um. so I did, th I think I did explain what the event was. It's called Top Dog Day, and it's basically just like sales awards, kind of like people trying to get the most sales throughout the day, and then at the end of the day, there's like awards and stuff. Um. So that was the vibe. We went because we, obviously I'm not in sales, but we work closely with sales and with account managers. So that's why we went just to like, I guess, integrate departments and whatnot. Um, had like, had some meetings with my account managers, um, which was nice, it was nice to meet them in person. But yeah, like every time someone got an award, they like stood up and like bowed and every, like the whole office was cheering, it was crazy. Um, but it's nice, it's nice that they like show you recognition for stuff like that, I think it's really good. But I will stop rambling. I hope you enjoyed um, another work trip video. I don't think I have any more coming up unless I do go away for that unofficial Christmas party. I will definitely film that. Um, it'd be fun to bring my camera out, but I'd just be too scared to like break it, lose it, or to just not be let in places because a lot of bars don't let you in with cameras and stuff. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.